Today, we're going to be talking about how you can have a bottomless supply of cash in your coaching business. And we're talking to a special guest. We're going to be talking about that in just a second. Coming up next. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, LV, and I'm here with our special guest, Mr. Marco Russell, the king of client attraction. And I'm going to add on to the moniker king of content, because if you understand what type of machine he is when it comes to content, you would definitely understand. Marco, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Lil. Man, come on, man. LV. Listen, I, I I get the the pleasure of having you on the show, and it's kind of weird because I think I know what you're gonna say anyway, because we communicate so much. However, 100%. for those who do not know you or or maybe interested in what you have to say about the topic of making sure if cash is flowing through their coaching business, they'll stick around. So I just have first question, right? First mm-hmm. question. Let's jump straight into it. Um, when was the moment? Take us, take me back to the moment where you were like, "All right, I'm the king." of client attraction when what was that moment for you um i probably say it was actually man to be honest with you man it wasn't wasn't i think i think i've always well i won't say always but i think i may have i i've given i gave myself credit for i should say not too long ago actually within the last year and the way that we did it the way i kind of came to that realization is looking at the success stories it's like when you look at the marketplace and it's a lot of people who say they do this it's a lot of people who say they do that a lot of people who say they're this say they're that but look at the receipts like you can tell a tree by the fruits it bears right right and ain't nobody nobody in this space bearing more fruit than us when it turn when it comes to like coaches consultants service providers Helping individuals get clients. Like if people, people know, like if you want more clients, yeah, you want to leverage ads, you want to automate your client attraction process, you want to attract more clients that happily pay you three thousand to ten thousand dollars or more. I mean, unless you've been hiding under a rock, I mean, you already know it ain't it ain't no better place than us. And it's not just me. This ain't just me talking myself up, right? I'm just like kind of a lot of the face. You just see me in the face, but it's the team, right? So it's the team that actually makes the client kind of attraction not just the man himself. Does that make well, sense? Yeah, yeah, but what about you though? What was that moment where you like sitting at home and you know, you just had a hard day and the, and the light bulb just come off like where were, where were you? What were you thinking? What was that moment where you and not necessarily being the king of client attraction, but just knew that you were on to something. So, when I initially knew that I was on to something. So, when I learned all this stuff, I got I got involved in this online world through network marketing. So, and I started like you know, test buying courses, going through training, start putting stuff together. And then I start like generating some leads or generating a lead. And you start generating more leads and I start teaching it to other people. And then like other people was taking what I was teaching them and actually implement it and like getting results. And in that moment, that's when I knew I was on to something because not only was this working for me, but I was sharing it with other people, even on the small level and people were getting results. And that just began to just snowball. Nice, nice. I, I, I enjoy it. So let's get in, into the conversation of the coaching, consulting, service provider, business model. Like, how can someone, because I, I imagine if I'm watching this, I want to know more about, you know, getting clients. I want to know about how to keep cash coming into my business. Because as you said it numerous of times, so you don't have clients or if you don't have leads, you don't have people buying, you don't have a business, right? Mm-hmm. So my question to you would be, how do we even set up or what do we do to get a, like a bottomless supply? of cash flow into our coaching business? So I think it's a couple things, right? So I think it really boils down to most people, most people, so like most people come to us and they want to, they want to, like most people see us as like the ad people, right? Mm -hmm. Clients. But it's like people don't really understand, like one of the things that we're really great at is building businesses, right? Um, So a lot of people, when they come to us, it's like, it's not, we lead with the client stuff, but like in a lot of ways, we help you fix your business. So when it comes to like client, I mean cash flow, most people can't get consistent cash flow because their business model is broken. So for example, if you came to us and we helped you turn on ads, by your business model being broke, your business could still implode. Mm. So for example, let's say you're a coach and you do one-on-one coaching. 
we help you turn on a spigot for leads. You can't handle but so many clients. Right. Even when you're doing one on one. Let's say you're a service provider. Let's say you're an agency and you're a one person show or you got a VA or whatever, or your systems aren't systemized. Again, you can only take on so many clients. So that's going to affect your cash flow, right? Because if your business model, first of all, you got to have the right business model. Mm -hmm. Number two, you got to have the right pricing structure, right? And number three, when it comes to the pricing structure, you got to make sure you got the margins where you got the cash flow. So for example, somebody somebody could make a hundred thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. but they're spending 99 right you still got a cash flow issue right you could you could be making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month but you spend 260. Mm. like you got a cash flow issue it's not a revenue issue mm -hmm. right you got a cash flow issue your cash flow ain't there so you got to Figure that out, that piece out. So that's number one, fixing that whole business model. Once you got that fixed, and now you can actually serve people at scale. Mm -hmm. Not because most people that stuck serving one to one, but when you can serve people at scale, you can serve them one to many. Now you got the infrastructure set up. Now when you turn to speak it on on the front end, you can literally scale your business at whatever rate you want. It's it's kind of like you could turn it on and off. In the online marketing world, the biggest mistake I see people make is like they start with the ads, mm. right? Yeah. They start yeah. with ads. So we, so Dre and I, we used to teach this process called making millions one handed, right? Never and heard you of never that. Even heard, yeah, you never even heard me talk about it. I probably yeah, got to yeah. do another video. So this, so this, this is exclusive me rebirthing this, <laughs> and I'm and I'm a and I'm a freestyle because I don't remember it right off. Sure. But making millions one handed basically was like essentially. Coming up with your offer. Mm -hmm. Number two, creating your marketing funnel. Or and actually your offer, your lead magnet, your email follow-up campaign, and then putting your marketing funnel together. And then traffic. Okay. You know by being on the online world, mm -hmm. everybody wants to learn traffic. Right. But when you ask them what you're sending them to, their conversion process ain't right. Which is why we teach those three C's. Those three C's are uh, creative, mm -hmm. your copy, and then your conversion mechanism. So it's like your conversion mechanism is like when they click on that ad, where are they going to go? Mm -hmm. And they're all evenly distributed, right? The most important part is going to be your creative because that's going to stop the scroll. When they stop the scroll, your copy has to catch them. Mm -hmm. And then once they click on your ad, your conversion process has to be on point. Where now they can actually become a visitor to a lead to an actual client. Most people, you know, don't have that stuff fixed, and that all affects their cash flow. You fix that, now you never have to worry about cash flow. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. So now my question for you, since you said that, would be: Now, if I am a person who think ads is where I need to start first, how do you get that person to, or what would you say to that person to get them to look at everything? Because, like mm -hmm. you said, people. People come to you because they say ads. We need ads. We need to turn the speaker on. But how do how do we get them to be self aware enough to say that I don't have the other things in place? Because because most people don't think about business holistically, bro. So most mm -hmm. people most people look at they're not they don't they don't look at like how every piece fixed and hits. I mean every piece um, is congruent with the next piece of the puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like all right, if you got so let's just say for example. If you got a brick and mortar store mm -hmm. and you got a ton of people coming through, but it's just you in there. You don't got nobody to service to people, nobody to ask questions. You got a line all the way down the street. Your how you take payment is not refined. You got to think about the holistic process. People don't understand. It's like I, I tell people all the time, like ads aren't our marketing strategy. Right. Ads are a piece of the marketing strategy. People see our stuff from the surface level, and it's simple, but on the certain, uh, you already know behind the scenes, it's like our stuff is like super layered. Mm -hmm. Ads is just part of the marketing strategy. So most people think that when we talk about a client attraction system, they think we're talking about a funnel, like a mm -hmm. like a traditional online marketing funnel, like the pages, the up, sure. I mean the, the, the opt in page, the landing page. No, no, no. We're talking about the entire client attraction system. And it is layered. 
Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Makes makes total sense. So so now my my question because I'm just curious at this point, how do we, or how does one say okay, my business is whack at this moment, right? Mm-hmm. I thought I need ads. I'm looking at it. It's not congruent. What would you do? Because I know people always ask you like, yo, bro, what would you do if you were starting over? Or mm-hmm. what are you doing right now? What would Mark Will Russell do if he found out, all right, my stuff is not congruent? Which part isn't congruent? Let's just say two out of the three is not congruent. I, I want ads. They just heard you say, you know, the other four pieces. So I would go with, um, let's say their marketing funnel is not congruent and their mm-hmm. offer is not congruent. How would they fix it? Yeah. So I think the first thing, again, it kind of goes back to like, so like that's one of the things that I hate online, bro, is like this this idea of funnel hacking. Sure. Be- because people don't understand business is way more complex than that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, it's an intellectual sport, and most people don't want to think. They just want to be able to copy something and put it up or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it just don't work like that. So like when it comes to ads, most people come to us and they're like, I want to get the ads. I think it's my targeting. I think it's this. But in reality, everything starts with the messaging. Mm. Like the messaging is the big domino. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to explain to you why we know it's not targeting. Mm-hmm. Think about it. So let's use, let's use a broad audience. So when okay. you go in to run ads, you got interest targeting or whatever. Mm-hmm. Let's use Les Brown. Pretty big audience, right? Sure. Um, so we use Les. Inside of Les's audience, you have people who follow him, mm-hmm. who are beginners, mm-hmm. people who are employees who aren't even entrepreneurs or who have no idea to be, uh, who have no desire to be an entrepreneur. You have people who are six-figure business owners. Mm-hmm. You have people who are seven-figure business owners, people who are eight-figure business owners, and probably even people who have a hundred million dollar companies who all follow less. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the groups get smaller. Mm-hmm. Out of this audience. What's the one thing that's gonna speak? That's gonna splinter that audience. What would you say? I mean, it would be the messaging, but it's probably centered around speaking. I, I mean, I'm or, just... or not, or just, it could be speak. And like you said, it could be speakers in that audience as well. It could mm-hmm. be coaches in that audience. It could be mm-hmm. network marketers. But the thing that's gonna pull it out of who you want to speak to is like the messaging. Mm-hmm. So let's just say, for example, let's say it's me, you. Um, let's let's just say it's me and you. Let's say it's me and you hanging out. Yep, and. And we're and we and we hear a message, or we see a food truck coming down the street, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it says um, "best plant based vegan food in Flint." Yeah, who's gonna respond to that? You, Quicker, me or you? You, me. Yeah, right, right off the top. Yeah, me. Why? Because of the messaging. Yes, sir. It don't matter how great their plant based vegan food is. Like most people don't even know what plant based vegan food is. Right. Like, it's, well, they know what vegan food is because it's more of a bu- buzz thing. Mm-hmm. But like, if you just say plant based, okay, well, what does that mean? It's a jargon. It's a language that I'm familiar with because that's the world I live in. Sure. Right. Sure. So it's the messaging 100%. So you got to fix that. Otherwise, nobody's going to click your ad. Nobody's going to look at the process and nobody's ever going to see your offer because your message doesn't speak to them. And then sometimes people try to be too broad. Which presents a whole nother set of challenges because if you're speaking to everybody, then you're speaking to nobody. Did, right, did that answer right. your question, bro? Yeah, definitely a- answer the question. I mean, I know sometimes we have, like you said, if out of those five, if one is off, all of them are off, or yep. if two is off. So really t- uh, honing that in. So give me an example of not necessarily a client success story, but give me an example where someone had all five pieces running and it just, it, it blew your mind. It surprised you. So to give you a story of when they had all five things running and it. yep, like, like before five coming up cylinders and you were just like, wow, I didn't expect that. I mean, I expected you to do good, but I didn't expect that. Come on before they came to us or after? No, after. Yep. After. So that's a tricky one, man. So it, so when people come to us after they work with us and they follow the process, of course, mm-hmm. they always have like all five running. Some of them obviously take off faster than others. Sure. Um, so like, for example, we got one client, um, Tammy and them, they came to us working. They came to start working with us. They was doing about, you know, 4000 a month was a great month for them. 
Mm-hmm. Now we like eight or nine months in, they do a hundred and forty thousand or so a month, mm-hmm. right? After just making some tweaks, because they already had some pieces, but we just kind of went in, dissected the business a little bit, made some twists and some levers, and then voila, because it's typically just a few things. Like some people will go in and like kill their whole campaign instead of just like dialing in and seeing where the breakdown is and then mm-hmm. fixing that piece. Makes Does sense. that make sense? Makes sense. Makes sense. So, uh, a random question: Why is coaching and consulting so attractive today? Or well, it seems to be, even though I know it's still a small sector of business. Why does it seem so attractive for people? I think, and and so the coaching and consulting industry is and, and is growing like crazy. And I think the biggest reason is because people are beginning to understand that traditional education, depending on what you're looking to do, is there's a lot better way like you can come online and you can hire a consultant or a coach to help you learn pretty much anything right Mm -hmm. also people on this like the course industry is a huge industry in itself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 300 and something billion trillion or something like that Mm -hmm. and a lot of people they're getting burnt out on courses now again this is not affecting the course industry because a lot of people have just become aware of courses now but people who are more aware of courses they're like they're burnt out on courses and they want more hands on, more access, more step by step. So they're like, OK, they're evolving into the coaching and consulting industry. The mm-hmm. course industry is evolving because people are coming to the course world. And as people come to the course world and get burnt out on the course stuff, they're going to just evolve into the coaching and consulting world. And then that cycle is just going to continue to go. Does that make sense? Makes sense. So uh, predict 10 years down the road. What is coaching and consulting look like? 10 years down the road, yep. like every, for the most part, everyone will know what coaching and consulting is. Right now it's like, it's in its infancy stages, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Because most people don't even know what it is. Right. 10 years from now, it'll be like, like everybody kind of knows what Netflix is. Yeah. It'll be like, it'll be like that. You and to be honest with you, bro, even 10, even 10 years from now, it, I think it'll still be still kind of new the rest of the world still won't be hip 10 years from now sure sure so let's revert back to the cash flow mm-hmm. because one thing you are uniquely gifted on is simplifying the numbers mm-hmm. right so let's say um you know because i've seen i've seen when, when people when you say three to ten k people eyes bug out like what <laughs> but yeah. in reality if things are firing right that's doable it's really doable so for sure so let's take a number. Let's do the math. If they want to have a seven figure business, million dollar business in a year, what mm-hmm. does that look like from a cash flow perspective? So basically it boils down to, let's say, for example, if you charge five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say you charge five thousand dollars and that's you only have one offer and you charge five thousand. Mm-hmm. You only got to get 200 clients a month. Mm-hmm. I mean, not 200 clients a month. You only got to get 200 clients a year. Okay. So if we do that, so if we do the math, 200 divided by 12, that's 16 clients, 16.6 clients. So we just call it 16. 16, and it's less if you do like payment plans and you charge more or whatever. We're going to say everybody paid you 5,000. That's 16 clients a month. You divide that by four. You divide 16 clients by four. That's four, that's, um, four clients a week. Right. Four clients a week. You now got a million dollar business, and that's just at five k. You know, you charge ten k. Now you only require a hundred clients. Right. Ain't so a hundred clients divided by twelve, eight clients a month. Mm-hmm. That's like two clients a week. You got a million dollar business. Yeah. So when so it's really uh, simple. So when I hear you say that, so I'm thinking of the person who's watching this, who's new to to what you just said, and it's like, man, it's that simple. Are you? Is it really just that simple? Is this whole process of a of an endless or bottomless, um, you know, a bottomless aspect of cash flow? Is that is it really that easy? Yeah. So so great question. So let's 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 make this let's make this super practical, right? Sure. So let's make it simple because I know so most business owners because if we're just being real, yeah, the average if only about nine percent of business owners get to a million dollars. Sure. Right. So let's just break it down even more. Yep. So anybody who's watching this can make six figures, mm-hmm. 100000 a year from their mm-hmm. coaching business, working a few hours a week. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's make it simple, right? So let's say the, let's say the goal is $100,000. Mm-hmm. Um, let us say they charge 5000 
Mm-hmm. So we'll say divided by 5,000. So it only required 20 clients a year. Mm. Okay? 20 clients a year. So let's so to get 20 clients, let's reverse engineer this thing. Right. I think I, in the summer area, I like to just write it out. Right? I'm still kind of old school. <laughs> I got the pen and paper. So check this out, right? Let's reverse <laughs> Let's reverse engineer this thing. I'm gonna call you the numbers man every time you pull out the pen and paper and do numbers. Yeah, bro. Let's let's reverse engineer this thing, bro. So we want 20 clients, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Let's make this super doable. So let's do 20 clients. Let's say you close at. Let's say you're not really a salesperson. You're new to all this, so you close 10 percent of the people you talk to. Okay. So to get 20 clients. That means you got to talk to 200 people. Mm -hmm. So you got to have 200 calls, right? Okay. So so 200 calls. For you to get 200 calls, on average, about 10%, when you generate leads, about 10% of your leads are going to schedule a call immediately. About Mm -hmm. 10%. That's like a good baseline you want to shoot for. Sure. And then about 50%, are going to show up to the call. Okay. This is like all these are these are all worst case scenarios. Mm-hmm. So for you to have two hundred calls, you're going to require two thousand leads, right? Mm-hmm. Now, so well, that's what everybody's showing up. But let's just uh, let's account for fifty percent of people not showing up. Sure. So that means you're going to require four thousand leads. Four thousand leads. This is four thousand leads a year. Mm-hmm. So. So if we do 4,000 leads a year, so we say 4,000 leads a year, mm-hmm. and we divide that by 12, okay, you require 333 leads a month. Okay. We divide that by four, you need 83 leads a, 83 leads a week. Mm-hmm. Divide that by seven, you need 12 leads a day. Mm. 12 leads a day consistently that'll lead you to 12 20 clients and this is like you just closing 20 percent and all that right does it does it make sense makes tons of sense i tried to make it super i tried to make it super plain no that's plain if if folks don't get it they probably want to rewind this and 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 either watch or as they're listening just keep rewinding over and over and over until you Mm -hmm. get it follow the math write it down um as he's saying so i'm not going to hold you too much of your time just a couple more questions okay so the mindset and that's why I didn't start with it, because I know it's not the most attractive um, conversation to have. But what would you say is the one aspect of, of the mindset that needs like where does your mind need to be in order to have success in, in the coaching business to have, you know, endless amount of cash flow? I think your mindset has to be on the service of others. Mm. Right. Your minds, you have to be focused on the service of others. So I'm going to give you an example. Most people, and you've heard this, like you're a content guy, like you hear people like one of their biggest hangups, why they don't more create more content is typically they don't want to get on camera. Right. They don't like, they don't like how they look. Mm-hmm. They don't like how their voice sounds, all the different type of stuff. Mm-hmm. All of that it comes from a lack of the focus on the service of others mm. because you not doing the video because you don't like how your voice sounds. That's about you. Right. You not doing the video because you don't like how you look. That's a focus on you. You mm-hmm. not doing your video because your hair ain't did. That's a focus on you. Mm-hmm. Right. And I get it. I get it. You, you want to have you want to look presentable and all that. But like I had a huge fear of public speaking before mm. because I was focused on me. Mm-hmm. How I look, how I show up, what they're going to say. What if I don't dress like I don't care about none of that now. It's only focused on the service of others. When I create a piece of content, I do a podcast like this. We do an event. It's only focused on the service of others. Through the service of others, money is created. Mm. Cash flow is created. You want to make more money? Serve more people. Solve more problems. Entrepreneurship is simply solving problems for profit. If you're Mm. not making the money you want, it's because you're not solving enough problems. Yo, I love Does it. Does that make I, sense? Makes so much sense. Zig Ziglar said, uh, the bigger the problem you solve, the more money you make. And and then in addition to that, I heard a saying that really 
just kind of shakes me to my core, but I always share it with people is that you have to love your audience more than you love your pride and your ego. 100%. 100%. And Zig Ziglar also said, if you focus on helping enough people get what they want, you automatically get what you want. Automatically. Mm-hmm. Automatically. Love it. Love 100%. It. Love it. Last thing. What would you say to someone who's listening to you right now? And man, they warm. They like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm with it. I've been on the fence and I, I need this. I need this in my life. Meaning they would like to build a seven figure or maybe just even a six figure coaching business. Right. Mm-hmm. What should they do right now? If they want to grow a six figure coaching business. Yeah. So if they want to grow a six figure coaching business right now, I would say number one is figure out what's the one thing that you're amazing at. Like, what mm-hmm. can you help people? What problem can you help people solve? Right. That's the number one thing. What problem can you help people solve? Sure. And once you once you get clear on that, then you package it up. Mm hmm. Package that up into a premium coaching program, three thousand to ten thousand or more, and you serve it in a group standpoint. So you can serve one to one to many instead of one to one. Mm-hmm. Get that together. Put your client attraction system together so you can actually attract people to you. Validate the offer, mm-hmm. and then you drive some traffic, drive some ads to it to really ramp it up even fast. And then just focus on helping people get results because we just broke it down. I mean, if you're charging five thousand, you only got to get two clients a month. That's it. You get a client every other week. I mean, you got you make one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. Man, there it is. There it is. So and think about this, man. We talked about we talked about two hundred calls. Right. Right. Over a year. So we divide that. So that's two hundred calls over a year. So check this out. Two hundred calls over a year. Divided by twelve. That's sixteen calls a month. Mm-hmm. That's four calls a week. Mm-hmm. That's four hours. Yeah, I mean it's four hours of work per week on calls, hundred thousand, and you at home in pajamas or whatever you want to wear. Right, right. I mean, I mean that's the formula. I mean we ain't even over oversimplifying it. That's like we see people doing it every day. Every we day. got clients who are doing it, so it's like that's the formula. I literally just laid it out like it's right there. <laughs> And for those who are listening, he's showing the numbers on the screen. Uh, if you want to go watch it, definitely catch it on, on the YouTube or or the IG. So with that being said, I'm going to say this, um, and, and I'm also throwing to you, paidadplaybook.com. Why should they go to the paidadplaybook.com? Because those le- we talked about getting 4,000 leads a year, mm-hmm. right? The paid ad playbook. Some people are like, well, how do I get 4,000 leads? That's the <laughs> hardest part. Right. Well, the paid ad playbook shows you how to get 50 to 100 leads per day every single day. That's how you accelerate Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's how you accelerate it. So um, paid ad playbook is going to show you how to get 50 to 100 leads every single day that actually convert into clients. Walk you through the process step by step by step. You're going to get the downloadable playbook that you can print out, put on your desk, keep it on your desktop, whatever. And you're going to get a bonus training video that shows you how to customize it. Uh, customized playbook and a strategy for your business specifically. So go get it for free. Pay that playbook.com. Anything else you want to share with the people? Nah, man, I was just, I appreciate you, bro. I'm grateful for you, man. Grateful for all that you do, all that you do for the team, all that you do for the world. Um, just your heart for giving and serving people, man. You absolutely amazing, bro. So I'm grateful to have you in my life, man. Grateful for the platform and grateful for the opportunity to serve. So now for those who are listening, go do something with this stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's time out for just listening Go take one thing that you learn, go implement it and make a habit of taking one thing that you learn from podcasts, from um, listening to LV mm-hmm. and start implementing that and then compound it and then watch what happens. Yeah. And if y'all don't get that paid that playbook, I'm going to come and knock on your door at your house and I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> yeah. You got to get it. You got to get it. You got to get it. Paid at playbook.com. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the LV TV podcast where we talk all things content, clients, cash flow for the profit and impact focused coaches and consultants just like yourself. Y'all have a good one.